Hello everyone, I'm Farrell and welcome to the Stanley Parable. Probably good if I keep I keep doing that. Looking at the screen and not my actual camera. And this is a weird game. A friend recommended it to me and they said you should really try this game out. It's weird. It kind of breaks the fourth wall, so I've never played any of this. I've never heard of it until my friend recommended it to me. So I'm going to go ahead and play this and see how well we do in this game. This is the story of a man named Stanley. Stanley worked for a company in a big building where he was employee number 427. Employee number 427's job was simple. He sat at his desk in room 427 and he pushed buttons on the keyboard. Orders came to him through a monitor at his desk, telling him what buttons to push, how long to push them, and in what order. This is what employee 427 did every day of every month of every year. And although others might have considered it soul ripping, Stanley relished every moment that the orders came in, as though he had been made exactly for this job. And Stanley was happy. I can always. And then one day, something very peculiar happened. Something that would forever change Stanley. Something he would never quite forget. He had been at his desk for nearly an hour when he realized that not one single order had arrived on the monitor for him to follow. No one had showed up to give him instructions, call a meeting, or even say hi. Never in all his years at the company had this happened, this complete isolation. Something was very clearly wrong. Shocked, frozen solid, Stanley found himself unable to move for the longest time. But as he came to his wits and regained his senses, he got up from his desk and stepped out of his office. Okay, can I, oh, that's wrong, wrong fingers on the wrong thing, but yeah, this is the game. Basically, it's a game where you're a person in a little cubicle, office thing, and a person narrates your life. And it gets weird, from what I've been told. Ah. Uh, nobody. Nobody home. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. No matter how hard Stanley looked, he couldn't find a trace of his co-workers. Nope. Nowhere to be found. What's on your computer? Porn? Can I zoom? No, I can't. Oh! Okay, easy interact. I can't turn it back on. I want to look at the porn! I can't look at the born. Copy machine? Can I make copies? No? I really want to copy my butt and just post it all over. Wow, that... That's bright. <laughs> Go in here? No? Uh, everyone's just gone. Man, everyone just everyone just left me. Huge meeting, there's probably pizza there. Drinks, maybe some alcohol. Good old office party, and I wasn't invited. Ugh. See how much I'm loved here. All my hard work. It is almost eleven thirty. Workday is just beginning. Can I go up there? Can I? No. That's a nice picture of a leaf. Very nice. Go into the room. Anybody? Man, everyone's just gone. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. What? What? There is no door on my left, unless you mean straight, like, straight forward left. So I turn left, there's just chairs. Do I go left or right? Everyone write down in the comments, should I go left or right? Which one do you think I'm going to pick? I'm going to go right. This was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly <laughs> well. 
Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, yeah. just to admire it. Yeah, I want to admire the employee lounge that nobody's in. Can I go in here? I want to look at the porn. Damn it. Nothing. Ah, yes. Truly a room worth admiring. It had really been worth the detour after all, just to spend a few moments here in this immaculate, beautifully constructed room. Yes. Stanley simply stood here, drinking it all in. Drinking it all in. Can I get a drink? Cold. So what do we got here? I can't read that. Yes. Really, really worth it being here in the room. A room so utterly captivating that even though all your co-workers have mysteriously vanished, here you sit looking at these chairs and some paintings. <laughs> really worth it. Yes, it really was worth it. <laughs> Look at this amazing picture. Guys, look at this amazing picture. At this point, Stanley's obsession with this room bordered on creepy <laughs> and reflected poorly on his overall personality. <laughs> it's possible that this is why everyone left. <laughs> My total infixiation of the of this room has driven, driven everyone away. <laughs> Stanley sat around waiting for more dialogue, but when a long time had passed and there was no more, he decided that the game was trying to send him a message. <laughs> I want to be back in the room. It's nice and cozy. But at last, he'd had enough of the amazing room and took the first open door on his left to get back to business. Store on his left? I want to see what's over here. Stanley was so bad at following directions, it's incredible he wasn't five years ago. <laughs> what can I say? I'm, I'm very disobedient. I'm an underdog. Nothing? I like not following the rules. Caution. Do not lie. If you are lying right now, stop. <laughs> That's a big factory. Holy shit. What does it say? Warning, do not jump from the cargo lift while it is in motion will cause death. Penalty for misuse of cargo lift, a thousand dollars. Penalty for jumping off the cargo lift, five. Um, they can't really charge you a fine if you're dead, especially if you jump off the lift. Look, Stanley, I think perhaps we've gotten off on the wrong foot here. I'm not your enemy, really, I'm not. I realize that investing in your trust in someone else can be difficult, but the fact is that the story has been about nothing but you all this time. There's someone you've been neglecting, Stanley. Someone you've forgotten about. Please, stop trying to make every decision by yourself. Now, I'm not asking for me, I'm asking for her. Her? I don't even know. This is it, Stanley. Your chance to redeem yourself, to put your work aside, to let her back into your life. She's been waiting. I I don't. Where do I go? I didn't hear what he said. Oh. That's lovely. A room that's completely dark. Can I go through here? No? Okay. Lots of boxes. Oh. That's her, Stanley. You need to be the one to do this. To reach out to her. If you can truly place your faith in another. Then pick up the phone. Can I leave? I can't leave. I don't want to do what you want to tell me to do. I want to leave. I seriously can't leave. Do I have to pick up the phone? I wonder if you'll say anything if I don't pick up the phone. I just wait long enough. F 
Fine, I'll pick up the phone. Okay. Oh. oh, Stanley, is that you? Uh, hold on, sweetie. Sorry to keep you waiting. I'm just pulling the bread out of the oven. Oh, right. Okay, there we go. All right, now, I want you to come in and tell me all about your day. <laughs> gotcha. Oh, come on. Did you actually think you had a loving wife? Who'd want to commit their life to you? I'm trying to make a point here, Stanley. I'm trying to get you to see something. Come inside. Let me show you what's really going on here. Sorry, but you're in my story now. Oh, fuck you, bitch. I'm in your story now? This is a very sad story about the death of a man named Stanley. Good morning, employee 427. Press 7 on your keyboard. Stanley is quite a boring fellow. He has a job that demands nothing of him, and every button that he pushes is a reminder of the inconsequential nature of his existence. Press N. I'm doing every button. I guess I have to press N. Look at him there, pushing buttons, doing exactly what he's told to do. Now he's pushing a button. Now he's eating lunch. Now he's going home. Now he's coming back to work. One might even feel sorry for him, except that he's chosen this life. I don't want to press V. I want to press V. But in his mind, ah. In his mind, he can go on fantastic adventures. From behind his desk, Stanley dreamed of wild expeditions into the unknown. Fantastic discoveries of new lands. It was wonderful. And each day that he returned to work was a reminder that none of it would ever happen to him. To what? Press 4 to watch TV. And so he began to fantasize about his own job. Can I leave? Imagine that one day while at work, he stepped up from his desk to realize that all of his co-workers, his boss, everyone in the building had suddenly vanished off the face of the earth. Can I leave? The thought excited him terribly. Spend time with the boys. I don't want to. I want to leave this room. I, I can't even go near the door. The hell's going on? You are a very human-esque mannequin. I don't like that. Press what? Eight? So, he went further. He imagined that he came to two open doors and that he could go through either. At last, choice. It barely even mattered what lay behind each door. The mere thought that his decisions would mean something was almost too wonderful to behold. It's time to prepare dinner. What is... As he wandered through this fantasy world. He began to fill it with many possible paths and destinations. Down one path lay an enormous round room with monitors and mind controls. And down another was a yellow line that weaved in many directions. And down another was a game with a baby. And he called it the Stanley Parable. Press L to tell your kids a story. What even is such this? A wonderful fantasy. And so in his head, he relived it again and then again. And again, over and over, wishing beyond hope that it would never end. That he might always feel this free. Surely there's an answer down some new path, mustn't there be? Perhaps if he played just one more time. But there is no answer. How could there possibly be? In reality, all he's doing is pushing the same buttons he always has. Nothing has changed. The longer he spends here, the more invested he gets. The more he forgets which life is the real one. Press Z to go to sleep. And I'm trying to tell him this. That in this world he can never be anything but an observer. That as long as he remains I here, want to he's fucking leave. But he won't listen to me. He won't stop. Here, watch this. Stanley, the next time the screen asks you to push a button, do not do it. You see? 
Can he just not hear me? How can I tell him in a way that he'll understand that every second he remains here, he's electing to kill himself? How can I get him to see what I see? How can I make him look at himself? I suppose I can't. Not in the way I want him to. But I don't make the rules. I simply play to my intended purpose, the same as Stanley. We're not so different, I suppose. I'll try once more to convey all this to him. I'm compelled to. I must. Perhaps, well, maybe this time you'll see. Maybe this time. And I tried again. Press die. Stanley pushed a button. And I tried again. And Stanley pushed a button. And I What happened? Okay. Loading screen. That was weird. What the fuck is going on? Okay, we're back into it. Is this the beginning again? All of his co-workers were gone. Yeah, what do you mean? it is. Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Okay, this is weird. We're just back at the beginning. What happens if I choose the right door? When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Okay. This time I'll do everything you say. Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. How to solve a dispute with a co-worker? Um... The narrator is making me uncomfortable. He forces me. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. <laughs> just gonna disobey you, dude. So, so that's just the light. Oh god, okay. Game kind of freaked out a little bit. But Stanley just couldn't do it. He considered the possibility of facing his boss, admitting he had left his post during work hours. He might be fired for that. And in such a competitive economy, why had he taken that risk? All because he believed everyone had vanished. His boss would think he was crazy. And then something occurred to Stanley. Maybe, he thought to himself, maybe I am crazy. All of my co-workers blinking mysteriously out of existence in a single moment for no reason at all. None of it made any logical sense. Um. And as Stanley pondered this, he began to make other strange observations. For example, why couldn't he see his feet when he looked down? Why did doors close automatically behind him wherever he went? And for that matter, these rooms were starting to look pretty familiar. Uh, yeah. Why simply repeating? No, Stanley said to himself, this is all too strange, this can't be real. And at last, he came to the conclusion that had been on the tip of his tongue. He just hadn't found the words for it. I'm dreaming, he yelled. This is all a dream. Oh, what a relief Stanley felt to have finally found an answer, this an explanation. His co-workers weren't actually gone. He wasn't going to lose his job. He wasn't crazy after all. And he thought to himself, I suppose I'll wake up soon. I'll have to go back to my boring real-life job pushing buttons. I may as well just keeps going. while I'm still lucid. So, he imagined himself flying and began to gently float above the ground. Then he imagined himself soaring through space on a magical star field, and it too appeared. Oh. It was so much fun, and Stanley marveled that he had still not woken up. How was he remaining so lucid? And then perhaps the strangest question of them all entered Stanley's head. One he was amazed he hadn't asked himself sooner. Why is there a voice in my head dictating everything that I'm doing and thinking? Yep. Now the voice was describing itself being considered by Stanley, who found it particularly strange. I'm dreaming about a voice describing me, thinking about how it's describing my thoughts, he thought. And while he thought it all very odd, and wondered if this voice spoke to all people in their dreams, the truth was that, of course, 
This was not a dream. How could it be? Was Stanley simply deceiving himself? Believing that if he's asleep, he doesn't have to take responsibility for himself? Stanley is as awake right now as he's ever been in his life. Now, hearing the voice speak these words was quite a shock to Stanley. After all, he knew for certain, beyond a doubt, that this was in fact a dream. Did the voice not see him float and make the magical stars just a moment ago? How else would the voice explain all that? This voice was a part of himself too, surely, surely, if he could just... He would prove it. He would prove that he was in control, that this was a dream. So he closed his eyes gently, and he invited himself to wake up. He felt the cool weight of the blanket on his skin, the press of the mattress on his back, the fresh air of a world outside this one. Let me wake up, he thought to himself. I'm through with this dream. I wish it to be over. Let me go back to my job. Let me continue pushing the buttons. Please, it's all I want. I want my apartment and my wife and my job. All I want is my life exactly the way it's always been. My life is normal. I am normal. Everything will be fine. I am okay. Stanley began screaming. Please, someone, wake me up. My name is Stanley. I have a boss. I have an office. I am real. Please, just someone tell me I am real. I must be real. Oh, God. Be... Can anyone hear my voice? Who am I? Who am I? And everything went black. Okay. This is the story of a woman named Mariella. Mariella woke up on a day like any other. She arose, got dressed, gathered her belongings, and walked to her place of work. But on this particular day, her walk was interrupted by the body of a man who had stumbled through town talking and screaming to himself, and then collapsed dead on the sidewalk. And although she would soon turn to go call for an ambulance, for just a few brief moments, she considered the strange man. He was obviously crazy, this much she knew. Everyone knows what crazy people look like. And in that moment, she thought to herself how lucky she was to be normal. I am sane. I am in control of my mind. I know what is real and what isn't. It was comforting to think this, and in a certain way, seeing this man made her feel better. But then she remembered the meeting she had scheduled for that day. The very important people whose impressions of her would affect her career and by extension, the rest of her life. She had no time for this, so it was only a moment that she stood there, staring down at the body. And then she turned and ran. Okay. That was, that was interesting. So basically, I ended up dead. That, that was the, uh... What happened? I ended up dead. And I'm back here. Um, okay. <laughs> so it seems like there's multiple paths to this. Like, there's tons and tons of different paths. Um, I'll probably leave this video here. If you guys would like to see more, um, please leave a like and comment. It's always appreciated. This game, it's so weird. There's so many different endings. So I'll probably do a few more videos on it, trying to get all the endings. Um, if, but if you guys would like to see more, it's always appreciated if you leave a like and a comment. And if you haven't already, please subscribe. It is free, and who doesn't like free things? And as always, I'll see you all in the next video.